This video is sponsored by Nemesis Distress, and there's a link to it down in the description to follow its development on Steam. Hey, it's Alex, and I've been trying out a game called Nemesis Distress, which is a sci-fi survival horror game based on one of the top board games in the world, Nemesis. This new project is not a shooter, it definitely leans more into its survival horror side, meaning enemy avoidance, resource management, and using sound to your advantage are at the core of the gameplay. Although it can be played solo, it's intended for six people online in co-op. However, there are some elements of indirect team betrayal, so make sure you only bring your quality, trustworthy friends, or you might find them laughing in the escape pod as you get eaten. Nemesis Distress is being tested right now in beta, which is what you're seeing here, but early access for the game is coming in just a few months, so let's get into how it's going to play out. Every time you enter the fairly large main ship, the objectives will be randomly chosen, enemies will appear in different areas, and some of the item placement is changed up as well, so each attempt should be a little different each time. You will have one random main goal up in the top left that you'll need to complete before you can safely extract from the map and bank your accumulated XP. These goals might entail gathering fuel canisters to blow something up, destroying nests, analyzing data disks, or trying to temporarily freeze the big scary adult alien so you can harvest a sample from it. Good luck with that one. Your main objective is not the only thing you'll be working towards though. There are also dynamic emergency side missions that will happen, which are usually ship maintenance related. Life support systems might need to be reactivated, explosions may need to be stopped, alien containment might need to be kept in check, or maybe something just needs a little elbow grease repair. If you don't shift your focus and take care of these unpredictable hazards, you'll lose time from the main mission timer, and sometimes even unleash many more threats into the map. There is also always an optional secret quest objective you can try to complete as well. If you're confident you have the time and resources to spend a little extra time on this ship, you'll be rewarded if you manage to escape safely. To help with all those previous objectives, the overview map will play a big part in your success or failure. It helps you locate important rooms, helps you spot item stashes, points of interest, and all doorways. If you interact with a computer console, you can even open and close doors remotely or temporarily lock them. You can also track targets, toggle between remote cameras, or watch direct feeds of your teammates. Yes, you can spy on them. You could consider assigning a co-op partner to even be full-time chair guy for the party, who can give navigation advice and try to reroute dangerous enemies with carefully timed door foo. Playing on keyboard and mouse, you'll use the normal WASD for movement and control to crouch and sneak around, which is very important in this game. Use your mouse wheel or number keys to switch between your items. Press E to interact with things or pick stuff up. Holding shift will let you sprint, which is pretty loud though. In your inventory, you do have a spot for one heavy weapon and one light weapon. You can pick up numerous medkits, throwables, lockpicks, and bonus items, which will be down in the bottom of your small items inventory. And your backpack has two slots, which can hold the more important items. There's a big focus on sound in Nemesis Distress. Enemies will hunt you down if they can hear you, but you can also use your noisy human traits to your advantage as well. You can bait enemies to different locations by throwing objects you find around the ship, by holding down right click and then clicking left mouse when you have something in your hand. You could alternatively press T to whistle to draw them to your current location if you're feeling brave. If you're dropping an item, even that makes noise, so there's an entire key bind set to you to very, very carefully lay something down silently. Shh, be quiet. And since I'm already talking about extra buttons, who doesn't want to kick stuff? So press Q to kick, which does come in handy for a few different things. When sneaking around fails you though, or something pops out of a vent right into your face, sometimes your best option is just to run and hide. 
You can duck into little cubbies behind walls or hide behind the ship's interior structures to try to give the enemies the slip. Just don't make any noise. In space, no one can hear you scream. I, I feel like that's definitely a lie. The not-so-cuddly creatures infesting the ship adhere to an evolution-style ecosystem. They start out as eggs, which will spread all around the ship if you don't destroy them, which will then eventually ploop out larvae. The smaller ones don't deal any damage to you, but they will slow and disorient you if you get too close, which makes them deadly if you're being chased by one of the more hostile variants. The larger larvae can inflict the infection ailment on you, which limits your ability to extract from the mission. You really don't want to take a space cold home with you, so you'll need to cure yourself in the surgery bay before you can leave the ship. These larvae will eventually cocoon and then turn into a lovely butterfly. Oh, nope, little spider abominations. Although the big adult alien is a one hit kill, these little spiders will put you into a wounded bleeding state the first time they hit you. If you don't find a way to heal yourself, the next hit from one will be fatal find yourself a health pack or head over to the surgery bay. Then there's also the slime ailment which you might contract, which makes you slower and also gives you loud squishy feet. Not what you want when you're trying to slink around these tight corridors. You will also need to manage your character's stamina gauge, which dictates how much you can sprint. If you let your stamina get really low, your character will start huffing and puffing drawing nearby enemies to your location. This regenerates over time, or you can get a stamina buff from taking a shot from the canteen's coffee machine. No paper straw, please. Now, that pretty much covers the basics of Nemesis Distress, but here are a few bonus gameplay tips that might also help you out. First, the hacking tool gives you two charges which can be used to open locked doors, similar to the one-off lockpicks you can find but the hacking tool also lets you open and close doors from a distance. Might be useful when you have enemies right on your butt. The detector item can help you visually locate where enemies are nearby, or you can just listen out for your own beating heart, which will grow louder when the big alien's nearby. If you're desperate for some kind of early weapon, keep an eye out for pipes on the walls. I'm pretty sure it's not ship integrity important, so just strip that out of the wall and you now have a makeshift alien basher. And if you're lucky enough to find yourself a heavy weapon, consider saving this precious ammo as a last ditch effort to save yourself from being mauled by the big adult alien. And with that, that should hopefully prepare you for Nemesis Distress, without giving away too many specifics. Since it is survival horror, figuring out what is where and what does what is the main appeal, so I didn't want to reveal too much. Now if Nemesis Distress looks like your kind of thing, I put a link to it in the description so that you can follow and wishlist it over on Steam. A big thanks to Awaken Realms Digital for sponsoring today's video and for supporting Boomstick Gaming. As always, this has been Alex, and I appreciate you checking this out. I'll see ya.